Yeah, I'm tying it in by the tip. And this this uh, particular feather, number one feather, really doesn't add a lot of floating. It adds a little bit. It's probably as much as the dubbing would on a regular elk hair caddis. But uh, I use it just because because it's CDC and I want to. <laughs> so what I do is, oh and by the way the reason this is bright green is because uh, it shows up for you guys but also because that's one of the, that's one of the main uh, colors of uh, the pupa. You normally don't see the pupa unless you catch a caddis and you got to catch it and you got to turn it around and look under, underneath and see, uh, you know, its abdomen. But you'll, you'll find that uh, several of the species actually have a bright green, uh, so it's a legitimate color. Yeah, and fish, fish don't care because they can't see color. Yeah, that's all right, shade gray. And we've got a really good start here. Understand what you're saying. You got the, okay. uh, the thread okay. around the point of your it's hook okay. a couple thraps back. Cleaned it up. No, you're okay. He's cleaned it up. Oh, okay. I, I think we're okay. No. Back your thread off. How <laughs> 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 oh, the hell do you know? <laughs> there's, no, there's no thread on, yeah, the, on the point of the hook. Somebody should go okay. to the senior at flight. It looks like it, but I can't be. Sure, why? I think that's dirt on the lens of the projector. <laughs> However, I do appreciate the help. <laughs> it's amazing how well you can tie flies when you're sitting by yourself <laughs> and how hard it is to tie flies when you're trying to uh, explain what you're doing and, and you have this much help. We've got all these wise guys coming after you. Now there's going to be a lot of stuff up front on this fly, so I, the body is, is actually uh, pretty, made pretty short. So I've got a whole bunch of other things to put on it. So I'm going to tie that off. This fuzzy stuff that pops out, that's good stuff because that's the stuff that floats. Sometimes it pops out in the wrong place and I cut it off. But, uh, I try to encourage that to happen. Okay, um, the next thing that we do, and this is the part where a lot of people struggle, and that is that uh, in, order to, in order to use the feather on certain parts of the fly, which now comes the legs, uh, we have to get rid of the stem because the CDC stem, stem is very, very brittle and hard, hard to wrap around a hook, and it just doesn't work out well. It, it works better if you, if you use just the fibers and not the stem. So we do it, and we do it by making a dubbing loop out of the fibers. There's several ways to do that. Uh, a guy in Switzerland, Mark Pettigene, makes a thing called a magic tool. And it's got devices in it which hold the feather so that you can remove the stem 
and it works really, really good. The downside of it is that it only does that one job, and it costs $38. And so, uh, you see, this has never been opened. I just use it to show people. And they're overpriced. And then I got another thing here that was made by Phil Huffman uh, from a design that uh, a French guy and I came up with. Hold it by the hook. In front of the hook. Yeah, there you go. Okay. There you go. Okay. This is made out of a piece of flooring material, and it's got slots in, in some foam up here, and it goes on it goes on the stem of the vise, and you slide the uh, the fly or the, the feather down into the slot in order to get rid of the. So that's another way to do it, uh, and it works really good. Uh, another way that I've done it in the past uh, is I've tried to. In order to get rid of the stem, you have to stretch the feather, and I've tried to do it like that. Yeah. And that's really hard to do. It's a real struggle. And uh, so I, I, I've done it several times, but uh, it's, it's just too difficult. So what I did, I've been looking for a certain kind of a clip that wouldn't uh, damage the feather and that I could mount. And I found one, and this is it right here. It's got a screw hole at one end and it's got round jaws that won't cut into the uh, feather, or into the stem of the feather, and it's real, real strong. And I've got one screwed over onto the uh, front of my vise, or the base of my vise. I'm sorry you can't see that, but... You can now. You can't see it now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I've got, I've got the feather that I'm going to use for legs. I've got it mounted in that clamp, uh, big end in the clamp. And I take something that you buy at uh, home at uh, uh, Staples or uh, Office Depot, a little uh, a little clip, a little plastic clip that you can buy uh, a bag of 25 of them for a couple dollars, and it seems to work out just perfect for this size fly. Uh, you can use a bigger clip for larger flies, and this one I got at uh, the dollar store in Port Angeles, and there are like six of them for. A buck or something like that. The, the clips have to have have to have smooth jaws that, that grip grip the uh, uh, the feather. And these these two work real well. They're cheap and, and, and they do it. So what I do then is I I kind of preen the the filament so they're standing straight up, okay. And then I bring the clip in uh, in the center of the fly, and I surround the fibers and trap the stem in the clip and I close it. And that's all that that's all the clip does. But without that clip, that's really hard to do, I gotta tell you. Then I take then I take the feather, which is now trapped in the clip with the fibers, uh, the heavy fibers are down in the clip and the tips of the fibers are sticking out. And I trim it so that it's exactly the width of the clip. Because I know that's how much I need. A little higher. There you go. Yeah, I've trimmed off, trimmed it off now, so it's the same length as the clip is wide. Okay. Got it. I can't see it. Put it, put it in right in front of the fly. Yeah, right in front of the fly. Between the camera and the fly. Same level as the fly. Same level as the fly. The next step. There you go. Okay, now they saw it. The next step is that I got to get it out of there because I got to get rid of the stem. So the fibers are folded onto themselves, and the stem is down in the, in the clip. I take another clip, just like the first clip, and I trap the stuff that's sticking out. And then I let it, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> you get more like me every day, Dave. <laughs> Sorry, Jackie. <laughs> well, now I've got it, now I've got it trapped. Uh, with the with the with the uh, stem exposed, so I can get at it. Okay, and the fibers that I'm going to use are down inside the clip. Okay, so I take I like to use a long scissor for this, so I can do it in one whack. I take it and I cut off the stem like a so. Down. Now I'm, I can't do it down. Oh, okay. Down. So now I've got the fibers are completely independent. They're ready to uh, go on the fly. And the stem is gone. I got rid of the stem. Okay, the fine the fine end of the fibers are down inside the stem, and the stub ends of the fibers are uh, sticking out. Now comes the hard part. Uh, I'm going to split the thread. 
And uh, that can be kind of difficult. And uh, some things I've learned on how to do it is, uh, you know, when, when, you, when you wrap, every turn you wrap, you twist the thread one revolution. And so when you've wrapped a whole bunch of turns, then pretty soon you don't have flat thread anymore. You've got thread that is, you know, all, all twisted up. And it's for, you, you, can't, you can't split thread like that. Uh, oh, and by the way, the kind of thread that I use is uh, HTC or UTC uh, 70 denier. And it's flat as it comes off the spool. Most threads that you buy are <coughs> spun as part of the manufacturing on purpose, but this, this uh, thread is made to be flat and it comes off the spool flat. So I'll take a look at it and see if it's flat enough that I can split it, and I think it is. If it wasn't, I would un I would unravel a little, a little bit until it was flat. But it's flat, and I, so I get the I put the point of the needle right in the center of the of the thread, and I've got now I've got uh, two filaments that are the same size. So the next thing I do is I take. Yeah. Remember this stuff that was in the clip? I take that and I put it in, put it in the uh, thread dubbing loop. Catch it in there. Whoops! I lost it. To do it again, just to prove to you, that I can do it twice. Split it. The way the light is is giving me trouble. I'm like, having trouble finding the center of the thread because of the way the light is. Go ahead and turn your light on for now. Turn on. I'll get it here in a minute. Hey. Uh, another little tip is that uh, regular, uh, regular. Uh, uh, needles on, on these tools is too big to do this. And so what I did is I made one out of a sewing machine needle. Sewing machine needles have extremely fine points on them and then they, they widen out real quick to, uh, they have a broad thing where the thread goes through. And they work better for finding the center of the thread when you split it. So then the next thing is just making a standard dubbing loop. So you spin it until you got make sure that you got the uh, fibers trapped. And I don't know to tell you how to do this, but if you don't do it enough, everything falls apart when you try to wrap it. If you do it too much, the thread breaks. <laughs> so I just seem I've done enough of them that I can tell when to stop, I guess. So now I've made a whole bunch of fuzzy stuff all up and down the body. And I'm going to try to move as much of it I can down to the bottom. So, and then the next thing is, so now we got two CDC feathers in it, right? Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put two more in as underwings. And I use the tips of a CDC feather, and I've just, I've used that magic glue that comes out of your mouth, mm. and I've, uh, uh, shaped it so it's like that, so it kind of stays together, and I put it right on top as an underwing. And I put a couple of loose wraps around it, and then put it back on top, because it always falls off to the side when you do that. Okay, and then I do one more. So now, now I've got uh, three CDC feathers on it. This is the fourth one, coming up right here. I 
put it on top of that one. Just lay it right on top of it. Tie it on. So now I've got two underwings under, that are going to go underneath the uh, elk hair. And although I've got them squished together with my spit, when they dry out, they're going to be, you know, they're going to have all the fibers sticking out. And they're going to have all the surface area to make bubbles. And then turn that off. Put a couple more wraps on it. Next comes the elk hair. I think this is actually deer hair, but it doesn't really make any difference. Deer hair works just as good as elk hair. Because you're really not going to be using it that much as a floating anyway, like, like it was on the original, on the original uh, elk hair caddis. I take my little comb. I got a little comb here that I can comb the junk out of the deer hair. It to stay on. And then I put it in the hair stacker. There's two ways to put elk hair or deer hair on as a wing, or on as anything really. One way is to cut it to length and put it on. The other way is to just make it extra long, put it on, and then trim it off afterwards. And uh, I prefer the first way, it's a lot easier for me. So here's what we do. The hair wing is supposed to be just a little bit longer than the uh, hook. And I didn't point this out exactly, but you saw I didn't put a tail on. That's because caddis don't have tails. So you, you measure it out so it's a little bit longer than the wing. Okay, and then I cut it to length. Here's a little trick that probably a lot of you use, but if you haven't used it, it uh, you know, when you put an elk, uh, a hair wing on something, sometimes it just runs all over and it comes down to the sides and it goes underneath the bottom and all that kind of stuff because it's so slippery until you get it tied down. So here's the way you get rid of that. Uh, you tie two loops of thread around just the hair and then you bring it down onto the, the, the uh, yeah. top of the hook and you put it exactly where you want it so that the eye is clear. See, the eye doesn't have any hair on it at all. And then you very slowly start applying pressure. If you put a whole pressure, bunch of pressure all at once, you can, you can mess it up and pretty soon the whole hair wing is on the other side of the fly instead of on the top. You get a few uh, wraps on it and then you can start putting pressure on it. And if you, if you didn't do this last step that I'm going to do, which is to put the fifth CDC on, um, you could make you could make a hair head, you know, like on a, on a grasshopper or something, uh, just by putting it closer to to the eye of the hook. But in my case, I'm not going to do that, so I'm wrapping all that down real tight. And you see, it turned out real good. It's all up on top and all exactly where it's supposed to be. We're almost done. Hang in there. So I the I guess. <laughs> I guess uh, the the reason that uh, the reason that I use five is because it they all fit, <laughs> and the, the more of these things you can get on, the more bubbles that you're going to have. But uh, to show you what the difference is between a dyed one, a dyed one, by the way, doesn't have any preen oil on it anymore. A lot of people buy CDC and they think that they're going to use it because it's got preen oil on it and that's going to make the fly float. And the preen oil gets stripped away when they dye it. Sometimes some manufacturers add some in, but it's never the same as it would be on a natural duck. So uh, it isn't the preen oil that keeps the thing floating, it's the bubbles that are attracted by the... This one, this particular feather, if you can see it, that's a natural feather. It has not been dyed. So it's got, it's got the duck's preen oil on it. It's not going to stay on very long, though. A few more through dicks in the water, and it's going to be gone. But anyway, if you, buy nat if you can use that color, you buy natural uh, uh, CDC, you get, uh, get preen oil on it.
or you can buy a bottle of green oil from Dave over at Waters West, and it costs $20 for a little teeny bottle. It takes a lot of ducks to make a bottle of green oil. <laughs> so anyway, here's the same process over again. Hey, Dane, where'd you find that metal clip that shows up on the... Uh, I brought the catalog. It's a, it's a company called Micromark, and they have some of the best little tools oh, for fly yeah, tires you ever saw in your life. And I found it in there, and the catalog has got a page turned on it so you can find it. And I've got a couple of them here if anybody wants them. Uh, it's, a, it's a great little device, it really is. It took me a long time to find that, and I used a lot of stuff until I got to it, but I got the perfect one now. Okay, so I transfer. Sorry you can't see this, but I transfer it into the clip. I got it all put in the clip now. And I'm going to trim the ends so it's the right width. And I guess what, what I'm saying that this feather is for <laughs> is for the horns for the for the bug. I don't think that really makes any difference, but you got to have a reason for it, so that's the reason. <laughs> and, and again, like I said, it, it's, uh, it's one more CDC feather, and so it's that much more, more flotation. So now I've transferred it to the other clip so that the stem is exposed. And by the way, you can put two feathers in this thing and do it. You know, a lot of, a lot of insects have variegated coloring. They don't just have a solid color. They have all kinds of modeling and different colors on them. And if you take a black feather and a white feather, you can make, uh, and you put them both in the, in the clip at the same time using this process, uh, you can make a uh, black and white uh, product out of it. Or you, can, you can make any combination you want. And you can also use this, this process for regular feathers. It doesn't have to be CDC. You just need to use CDC for caddisflies because of the flotation factor. Okay, I just cut off the stem. Now, I've probably really round my thread into a tizzy here. Yeah. I think I'm still good. Sometimes when I'm, when I'm talking like this and doing it, uh, I get the thread wound up so much that I can't split it. When I'm, when I'm by myself and I can really concentrate on what I'm doing, I'll make three turns of thread and then I'll take three, I'll take three turns and, and twist the thread uh, counterclockwise. And that takes the, that takes the uh, twist out of it. And then take three more turns of thread and take three out. But when I'm, when I'm uh, trying to explain something, I can't, I can't uh, chew gum and walk at the same time. Okay, there's the split. By the way, there's five of these flies in the, in the uh, raffle tonight. I guess they're going to put them in the raffle the way I gave them to them. Spin it. So you can see now why I stopped the body so quick. I got a lot of stuff going on up in the front end here. And I need the space, so I made the body pretty short. And I put it on and I try to brush it back as much as I can as I put it on. And it makes kind of a head and then it makes it a lot of wiggly stuff that sticks out of it also. So it, it, uh, it's the right thing to do. There we got it. And we'll tie it off. There you go.
there's the five. She's ready to go. Five CDC feathers. I'm sorry, what was the question?